Hey everyone, I have a few updates I wanna share with you today. I wanna to start with this one because it's the one I'm most excited about. I have my old Nolte planner from 2021 and this is what I was using for memory keeping. This is just a weekly vertical planner. Uh, I miss this so much. Ever since I stopped using this, I have always been thinking of trying to incorporate it back in some kind of way in one of the systems that I'm using. And I haven't been able to. I've attempted many times, but it never really, never really panned out. So on the monthlies, I was just keeping track of the weather, but in my own words, and I always... I, I really enjoyed doing it that way. And then I fell off of this in May of 2021, and that's because we moved. And for some reason, I just simply cannot juggle moving and keeping up with any of my journaling, memory keeping, whatever it is. But I always keep up with my planner. So in here, I was just summarizing the events of the day. And I made sure to include things that weren't included in my planner because I don't like having things repetitive. That's a really quick way for me to fall off of, of doing that task. So in here, I was using planner stickers and I loved using these planner icon stickers in here. I was never able to use them for actual planning but in this memory keeping form, it worked so well. And this is when I bought all of these planner stickers and I still have them and I'm still trying to use them. Uh, they're really aging out at this point. And so I really, I really want to get through them. I liked doing this because I could keep up with my hand lettering. I always like to have something that sort of forces me to hand letter. And then towards the end of this, I started incorporating my markers right here. And I just started doing that more and more. And I sort of, I developed a pattern and a, and a style with this that I just really ended up loving. And this is my favorite thing to flip through. And I just want to have something like this again. And I have thought each year of getting another Nolte, but I really need my systems simplified. I can't, I just cannot have another uh, separate book like this uh, in my system. So you get the idea here. I just, I love a vertical for this. And normally I hate a vertical weekly uh, in any other way, like for any other use except this. So I think last year I actually tried to incorporate it into my passport. I was doing memory keeping for uh, each of my kids and then a family one. And then I put another insert in here and I never showed it on my channel. And I had mocked it up. I had drawn out the weeklies in just a blank insert. And I don't even think I lasted a week because it was feeling really repetitive because I was already memory keeping in a bunch of other inserts. So that fell off really quick and I didn't even bother showing it. But in my Hobonichi weeks, which I think this is so odd because this is a horizontal weekly, but back here in the back, this is a mega, so it's got tons of notes pages. I... <laughs> drew out a vertical weekly, uh, just like the Nolte. And I wanted, I just wanted to try to do the same thing. Obviously I've only done two, two days worth, but I had so much fun doing this. And because I only have this one planner and then my one journal that I'm keeping track with this year, this isn't feeling repetitive yet. If it does, I'm going to stop, but I figured I have the space, I have the tools, these stickers need to be used, and I was just, 
getting a hankering to do this. So I just did it. And I love the way this turned out. I can't wait for this week to be completed so I can just see the full week at a glance. And like I said, I'm just going to keep up with this until, I don't know, something hits the fan and I, I can't keep up with it anymore. So I'll just keep you updated on that. Uh, this last section, so in the notes section, I split it up into three different sections. The first one is, is how I've always used the notes pages in a Hobonichi Weeks every year. And it's just for messy notes. It's an information landfill. And then for the middle section, I saved for more neatly written, more organized lists. I've shown these dozens of times on my channel, but it's just for me to keep track of, of certain things. And then the last section, which I allotted the most pages for, I, I was initially planning something else like for later this year, but I just really don't think that's gonna pan out. So I pretty much scrapped that idea. And then I had this whole section of like a hundred pages or so left in the back here. And I thought, well, I really want to do this, so I'm going to do it. And there's enough pages if I do continue for the rest of the year. So that's what's going on with that. And I'm, I'm just really excited about it. I'm still on a no spend. <laughs> and it looks like I'm going to be for like the rest of my life. Uh, because I have my, uh, my unexpected surgery and the hospital bills are starting to come calling. And I was like, well... I guess I'm not getting anything new anytime soon. So I'm just trying to utilize what I have and be creative in in what's a, available to me. And this, this feels really good right now and I'm, I'm really excited about it. So the challenge is always about trying to keep it fresh and new and interesting when I'm feeling very uh, stagnant and when I'm feeling like I want something new. So uh, I, th I think I'm doing pretty well with that, staying, staying as creative as I can be. Uh, the last time I showed the weeks, this was pretty much blank and it stayed pretty blank. So after the fact, I filled it in with some stickers and ephemera and things. And then I had this week, my, my bottom area was starting to bulk up a bit because this is where most of my stickers and ephemera are concentrated in. So I decided to start putting stickers up here if I can, just to, just to balance out everything. And then this is the current week. I just have a giant task list because I feel like I'm behind on everything since, uh, you know, all that health stuff kind of got in the way. Uh, so this will be another one where once the week is, is done, I'll come back in and, and stick things down. Uh, but that that's the update for this. So I'm trying to mimic mimic my Nolte and some, you know, fun format of memory keeping in here. Everything else is kind of, it's just very straightforward. Uh, I know I just showed this. The only thing I've done in here, I'm, I'm still putting quotes in here, loving that. And then for this notes book, I, I finally <laughs> put in my dot stickers and I have four sections so far. I don't feel like sharing this one yet, uh, but so far I have homeschool, stationary, and then home. I haven't had any actual entries yet. It took like two weeks for me to finally even get this far. Uh, but for, for stationary, I'm thinking like, I might just turn this to like hobby. I might do stationary slash hobby or slash leather or something like that. Uh, but once I start putting in entries in here, uh, I'll make sure to show that. And these dot stickers are from the Traveler's Company sticker set that they release each year. Comes with all of these stickers, the color dots and the icons. So I pulled these. I still have these orange ones left. So if I have another section, I'll add one more. I can't think of anything right now, so uh, th this is it. This is it for now. And then for my journal, there's nothing much here. I did add 
my favorite chalkboard sticker and wrote journal on there, finally. Uh, this this is getting full up and I'm, I'm really excited about this. This is like a Cosmo Air Light Danica 58 notebook in the dot grid. I don't even know when I got this, but I'm actually finishing it. I'm like so excited. Um, cause my, my journaling has slowed down significantly. Uh, the only reason I've even made it this far is because I had a lot of things to write about and lots of ephemera to paste in here because of my, the surgery that I, that I had. I do need to do the monthly overview for February. Let's see. Yeah, this is my February spread, my March spread, my April spread. <laughs> the only one that is done still is my January spread. I think I might just skip doing the hand lettering and I might just blow up the monthly pictures a bit to take up the full spread. I think I'm probably gonna do that since I am like three months behind at this point. Uh, and I'm, I'm just not really feeling like lettering stuff. So so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, okay, so this patch here, I had gotten this one and the subsequent, or the, the like brother of it, the blue and white one, uh, directly from the superior labor and it cost an arm and a leg and it, it was it's one of the purchases I regret but I'm glad um, that I have them in use now so I have the brown one here we love camping so I just was really suckered in by these and the other one I put on here so this is the superior labor utility pouch and I decided that I really liked the color of this against this nude leather and how it's getting some patina. It's much lighter on the back, but I just stuck this on with my Leathercraft cement. I just went for it. I just really quit overthinking things. Like this is my stuff, I paid for it, I'm gonna use it. If it falls off, I'm gonna reattach it with something else. <laughs> you know, it's just one big, trial and error like like life so I think this is so cute and I love that I have something on here uh so that's a new addition both of my <sighs> exorbitantly expensive patches are now both in use this one is actually just put on here with fabric tape uh and it's it's, it's been great I really love it and then the last update I have is well, for my journal, I was just using a, a gel pen uh, that, I, that I have in here. I have a bunch of gel pens I'm trying to use, namely these two. You know, they're just a Energel and then a Pilot Precise, you know, V5RT. Like, you know, you can get these at Walmart or whatever. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I was just using them up and not being very particular about the pens that I'm going to use. And then I got an itch finally for a, a fountain pen. Now, I think I have a pretty modest fountain pen collection. Uh, I'll, I'll show you here. So I, I have these two storage cases. These are all the fountain pens I own. This is everything. Uh, and I quit buying fountain pens a year maybe two years ago i'm just i i try to just like really get into fountain pens and be a really big fountain pen enthusiast i try to like learn everything about them and i realized i just don't care <laughs> so so i gave up on that and then my wallet was like so happy but obviously twisbees were were my jam these are all mediums and then i have like an extra fine uh, Robin gave me this. It's like the Twisby, I don't know, 580 Diamond ALR. Uh, this is too heavy for me. I probably need to just give it back to her. But she didn't like it because the grip is uh, ridged. And I just, I don't like the weight of it. This is just way too too heavy for me. 
My grip is so sensitive and it has been for the last like year or two. And I think that's why I've been so frustrated with fountain pens also. Uh, and, and also because there's they can be so expensive and I can't try them out before I buy them. So what if I hate it? And then I hate selling stuff. So it's just kind of like a lose-lose situation. Uh, but I've got a Lamy here, uh, which is one of my favorite, just cheaper pens. I have this Pilot Curados and uh, you know, it's a capless pen and it it's the only capless pen I have. And I really crave a capless pen, especially for when I'm journaling on the go. But I ultimately just decided I don't like this. It's so big, it's so bulky. And I was just really into clear demonstrators when I first got into fountain pens a few years back. And I, I think once I got into vintage pens, I just decided I kind of like a more classy looking pen. <laughs> so this, I just kind of fell out of love with it. And I found that if, if I used uh, like a sheening ink, it was, it would clog, it would like grow these barnacles and things. And this is, it comes apart in like five different pieces and it's, it's just, it's just pretty annoying and it's this big and I don't like it. Uh, I have my one Pelican and this is supposed to be a fine, but it writes, it writes like a broad. Uh, so I never, I never really go for that. And then I have, these are those rollerball pens forget what they're called, the Kakimori rollerball pens. Uh, and then I have this Kaveco Student. I cannot get this thing to work for me. It skips like all get out. I got so frustrated with it that it's not even cleaned out at this point. I haven't used it in forever. It's got some old ink in it. And it frustrated me to no end. I have never ever gotten a Kaveco pen to work for me. I don't know what it is. I'm allergic to these, I guess, but I love the colorway of this. I love how classic it looks. So I haven't given up on this, but the, uh, the like all sports and the smaller ones and stuff, uh, I just, that, the Kaveco brand just makes me cringe and I know they're so well loved and I just, I don't know, man. It, it's just how it's working out for me. Uh, but this one, this is my favorite one. So this contains all of my vintage fountain pens and I've just, I've just been so happy with these that I, I've also just quit buying. These are, these will cost you an arm and a leg and like your firstborn, but my favorites here and they're all different kinds. I've got Schaefer's, Parker's, I don't even know what this is, but I, I love this one. This is a Waterman. I have a few Waterman. Uh, a Wall. This is a Waterman. This might be my favorite Waterman. Is it a Waterman? <laughs> it's the five five two and a half. Uh, yeah, and it's just gorgeous. I love the etching on this. It's so pretty, and it has the best flexi nib. I won't buy, well, I won't buy any vintage pen now, but I won't buy a vintage pen unless I know it has like a full flex nib. They're just so soft to write with, so bouncy, and nothing modern that I have tried has ever come close to a vintage flex nib. Uh, so while I was still buying vintage pens, especially off Peyton Street pens, I would actually just type in the search bar flex and then and then look through those pens that showed up after that filter uh, because those are the only pens I was interested in. But I love these all metal pens. Like this wall has an amazing flex nib as well. And uh, I mean, I have enough. I have enough flex nibs that I'm, I'm satisfied. All different kinds of bodies. This is an ever sharp, uh, this was a, a cheaper one, but it has a great flex nib. And this one too is a pilot. Nope, that's not a flex nib. 
it was just a cheaper one and I just really liked the body. But over here, I have all of my pocket versions. And this is my favorite one. It's the Waterman 52V in the Olive Ripple. And it has an amazing flex nib. I, th this was the last one that I was using regularly when I was keeping up with my passport for memory keeping last year, I was writing with this. And uh, yeah, I, I started thinking back to that. And I was like, gosh, I could really use another pen um, like that I can write with right now. I should ink up one of these. And I almost thought about inking that up and then I thought some of my other ones have just been sitting around, so I need to do that. Uh, this is my favorite looking one because it, it has like this etching on the, on the cap and I love this body. I just love a good brown and gold. It's just so pretty. The only problem with this, this is a Schaefer, I don't, I don't know, a tuck away? Is it, a, it might be a tuck away, I don't know. I'm sure the fountain pen purists out there will, <laughs> Not waste a moment correcting me, uh, but this is not a flex nib. So when I just want a fine point, I, I'll go for this, but I really, really wish it was a flex nib because it has all the looks that I love. It just needs the nib that I love. So all that to say, I decided to ink up this missing one, which, which I have in here. And I, I don't like this pen case, but it needs extra protection. So this is the Conklin Endura. And I think this is the Imperial, Imperial one. It has to do with the colorway, I believe. Anyway, this has a beautiful flex nib on here, as usual, right? Uh, my husband got me this. You know, I have, I was like not going to say what ink I have in here because I don't know. I just feel like people get so sensitive about pens and the accuracy and like what you're using in them and stuff like that. And I just don't, I just don't care about it that much, but it does wind people up. But I have Noodler's uh, Walnut in here, which yes, it's probably not safe for a vintage pen, but it's all I have. I'm not buying new inks so, and it's like, I want to use it. I don't want this sitting around for like another few years. So I put that in here. I mean, it doesn't have glitter or sheen or anything like that in it. So it's, it's the safest I can muster at this point. Uh, so I've been using this Conklin Endura and in, in my journal here, and I take this on the go with me, like especially because I have to go up to like follow up appointments and stuff. And I feel like I'm always just waiting around in waiting rooms. Uh, so I needed it to be portable, which is why I have it in here. But I actually think I'm going to make a leather pen sleeve for this. And if if it's not midnight when I decide to make it, I will film it. <laughs> I will film it and show you all. I mean, it's one of the most basic things you can make, but I think I'm gonna make it out of this leather. This is the Austin leather at Tandy leather, uh, or it's Chic Sparrow's creme leather. And I think I'm just gonna make a sleeve to match this. Uh, but part of me wants to tear off this metal clasp here and like trace this out and and make it either Maverick or or this and see if I can reuse this. I don't know if that's possible. I just don't like this color or anything at all. Uh, and just make this for this, you know, but in a better leather. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure yet. I'll let y'all know. Anyway, those are just the updates I wanted to show you guys today. I've just not known what to film lately. I feel like they're mostly just updates and like little changes that I've been making in all of my systems, but hopefully that was entertaining. Uh, and I think I'm gonna try to do another paper story vlog in the next few days. I don't know, there's no there's no promises. I feel like everything's still a little bit chaotic around here. But anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're enjoying your stationery and it's almost mid-year. So mid-year lineups are, 
are gonna come through YouTube and mine is still gonna be like one planner and one journal, but I'm probably gonna do that video anyway. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.